everybody, my name is Ixie and welcome back to my channel where I analyze Nine Inch Nails music. And today I'm analyzing Every Day is Exactly the Same because I was going through some old stuff on a hard drive and I found this video of me from about three years ago trying to figure out the chord progression. So I thought I would do my past self a solid and sit down and actually figure out what was going on. I believe I can see the future. If my past self could see the future, then they would know that this was going to happen. This song is in E something. We'll figure it out as we go along. Sometimes I think it's in Dorian. Sometimes I think it's in Mixolydian or maybe it's Phrygian dominant or it's all of them. This is definitely mixed modal. Lots of modes. So we're gonna start at the intro, which is the same chord progression as the chorus. This is a nice simple beginning, very nine inch nails, bass, melody. That's it, no chords. What I'm hearing is like thirds and sixths. And those are very humanizing, warm, comforting intervals. There's no sevenths, there's no seconds, there is a fourth or fifth, there's no tritones. You know, these are really nice sounding intervals. Satisfying, really well written melody, very nice voice leading, nothing that's supposed to throw you off. It's really lovely. Bass line is really spread out across the keyboard. It goes all the way from here. Meanwhile, so this is ascending, this is descending. They start really far apart and they meet in the middle. Hmm, it starts really expansive. It's a little bit more epic, even though it's soft. And then as they get closer together, it's almost like it gets sweeter. It's gentler. You feel that? It's like they're hugging. And then these little variations on this melody make all the difference. It would be interesting if he did for every single phrase. Every phrase is exactly the same. Ooh, see, and that's so, so pretty. That's another sixth, where normally it would have been a third. Ending in unison feels like tension to release. The fourth time around, he reaches even higher with his variation. Instead of, it's, but it's the same pattern. High, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, highest. Unison. So while this is happening, it sounds almost like a computer screen, like flickering on or some light flickering on. And there's this like mm, very atmospheric washy sound pad coming in that's on E, which is the tonic. So that's kind of reinforcing that. It's just kind of there. At the very end of this intro, right, we launch into the verse. And in the transition, the way he leads us into it is with a, a pad that swells in on one note. And it's the most dissonant, I think, note he could have picked. And there's a reason he picked that note, but here's what it sounds like. Uh, what's that? Can you hear how dissonant that is? Against the G. So you got a minor second. And the chord that's sort of implied by the G, this being the root of the chord, G major. Yeah, that is crunch-tastic. And this G is the minor third if we were in E minor or Dorian. Then this major three swells in, and it swells in down here too. I always found that sort of unsettling. Just the note itself, but the fact that it's kind of low, it's a little harder to hear what it is. So it's just like... I think the reason he's doing that is because, well, he probably wanted to throw us off. But secondly, he's leading us into a part of the song where A flat is in the key. Before that, there's been no A flat. There's been no major third. It's all been G. 
but now we're going into a part of the song where there's going to be G and there's going to be A flat. So it's his way of sort of foreshadowing very briefly what's coming. I love the way it sort of like just creeps up on you like a train, you know? So I'm not going to talk about the chord progression yet for the intro chorus until we get to the actual chorus because we'll have more clues as to what's happening. It does kind of sound like... And he's not playing these chords. In fact, he doesn't play the chords at all in the entire song. This is just me trying to figure out what chord he might be implying with the other, you know, melodic and harmonic element, el la 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 la, with the other harmonic and melodic elements. We get to the verse and the chord progression is different. Check it out. in E minor if we were. We're in something that now has a flat two. You would not expect that. I could see this. Does that beat the same teeth? That would be like normal. Flat three, flat two, one. This is a Neapolitan. It's a flat major two and a major one. And then the flat three and the Neapolitan. We've heard that before. I'll have to go back and see which video it was that he had that cadence, but he's done that before. I firmly believe that we're now in E something. So at first I think he's singing a G. I believe I can see the future. A G J. So that's, what's cool about that is Dun, 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 dun. and that comes in okay i'm getting ahead of myself so once again he is teetering between this major third and this minor third of the key to tell you kind of what chord you're working with and he's accentuating this teeter-totter And he actually explicitly accentuates it with another synth that comes in. These are the intervals that I was trying to figure out on the vibraphone. So he can't keep this uh, A flat here. He has to go to G for this chord because this is the fifth degree of this chord. If he did this, it would be an augmented chord. This is the same situation as in Right Where It Belongs. He's just echoing his own voice with this. This flat two indicates that maybe we're in like Phrygian. Here's what Phrygian would sound like in E. So I think it's in Phrygian dominant though, because of this major third. There's a lot of things that are really cool about this melody, but one thing that I'm noticing in most of the songs of his that aren't instrumentals is that his melodies are coming in on like three or the end of three. So meaning they don't come in on beat one of the phrase. He waits for a little bit before his melodies start. It's a part of his sound. And what does that do to have some music going before the vocal even starts? You know that there's going to be a vocal some point but it just delays your gratification i think you quick break to talk about the rhythm section do you have this nice sort of slow trudging tempo and the bass line is playing 16th notes so you've got this sort of chugging feeling to the whole thing I love this drum groove. I've tried to learn how to play it on the drums. You can see that there's these really nice offbeats on the toms. And that is something that you hear in other Nine Inch Nails songs too, like various methods of escape. The kick is so complex for such a slow tempo. Dun 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 dun. Dun dun. Ooh, does that sound like the Great Destroyer? Yes, it does. Okay, so this is the kick and this is the snare and this is the tom. It's 
it's just such a good groove. So it's really satisfying. You have sort of a quicker sub rhythm that you can kind of groove to. But you could also groove to this primary tempo. Kind of depends on like what part of you wants to express itself at the time, which is one of my favorite things about sort of halftime grooves is how much space there is and how many sub rhythms there are to play with. Okay, back to the harmony. I want to point out something about this flat major two chord. It sounds very dramatic. That's one of the things that these flat major chords can provide is sort of a mm, like an unexpected drama. I can feel the rise of watching. By the way, I have eyes all over me. They're all watching. Okay, moving on to the chorus. I really don't want them to come around. Oh no, oh no. So that's kind of how he seems to want to lead us into these new sections. Oh no. The vocal melody is really nice. It's actually just a pentatonic scale. This pentatonic scale is being sung over sort of ambiguous chords. Maybe it's this. Every day is exactly the same. Or maybe it's this. There is no love here and there is no pain. This is really cool because I don't really know if you could say that this chord is E minor or E major. It's both. It's like it's Schrodinger's third. Let's just consider this E tonic chord to be both major and minor. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. Every day is day is. This we don't know either. Maybe there's a clue. What about this part? There's this breakdown, no bass line, no vocal melody. He's talking and you have this piano and the drums. Now, if that sounds a little bit unusual to you, there's a reason. It's because of this note. So this would be the raised sixth degree of E. So this is a major sixth. That is a little bit unexpected. We've been doing a lot of flat six stuff here. And it plays throughout the whole chord progression. You do get a moment where you're playing this. <laughs> that is nice. <laughs> it kind of resolves to this totally out of character, raised sixth. I just love that he's like, for the most part, most of his music, he's like, I don't care that it doesn't fit in the chord. I like that. I like that it's a little bit out of the box, that it fits sometimes and doesn't fit other times. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but for this first part of the bridge, the bass line is non-existent. So it kind of just feels like you're existing in E. reason why I think this sounds unusual is because we have had the flat six in that intro melody. So there's the minor six, but he's given us this. Oh, it's so trendy. That sounds to me like it's in Dorian. Dorian is gorgeous because you get the mystical sort of shrouded feeling of this. Maybe it's not shrouded, maybe there's more light coming through, but with the darkness of the minor. Easily one of my favorite modes, or actually I would say it is my favorite mode, but I don't know. Maybe it's one of these freaky mixolydian flat sixes or something, given how much I adore Nine Inch Nails music and that's pretty much all it's in. So it's just kind of the feeling you get. But oh, but that emphasis in the seventh. It's almost like the seventh is, yeah, it's like reaching and it wants to resolve, but it resolves to the sixth. And the sixth is not a resolution, really. It's more of a resolution than the seventh, but 
just nobody else I am aware of emphasizes sevenths the way that Nine Inch Nails does. Building melodies off of them, starting them on the seventh. The second half of the bridge, you get the chord progression of the chorus, but a totally different melody. And it's really pretty. It's also in the pentatonic scale. Just going up the pentatonic scale. And da, 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 da. Can't remember the lyrics, sorry. <laughs> I always thought he was saying I'm still inside her, but he's just saying I'm still inside. I feel a little embarrassed now, but I can't be the only person. I am still inside. That doesn't seem right, because he definitely sings. It's it's gentle. I am still inside. So he's just going, hmm, inside, hmm. I am still inside. bleeding through I wish this could have been any other way this is my favorite part of the whole song coming you ready but I just don't know I don't know what else I can do it took me weeks of practicing that interval really just wanted to go up a fourth what else i can do Cause that's what you would expect the pentatonic scale is closely related to the blue scale the scale being it just has this uh tritone it's very common to sing sort of this like pentatonic scale with a flat three kind of over something that might be major in blues. It gives it like a, mm, it's an edge. Don't know what else I can do. Even if it's what else I can do. Do you hear that? Which would have sounded great actually because he does things like that so often. But instead he sings the major third in anticipation, just like when it came in at the beginning of the intro. Uh, that is not easy to sing. Try it. Singing a tritone, mm, that can be that can be tricky. What else I can do? You know, in that major third, yeah, there's a little bit more hmm, warmth to it, you know, than the minor. What else I can do? What else I can do? It almost just sounds more desperate. It sounds more, he's reaching higher, you know? Yeah, I just love it. Pretty sure I did this whole analysis just to talk about that. He is doing this sort of flattened three kind of edgy bluesy thing for the chorus melody. Every day is exactly the same. That's the minor third, even though he's been implying that it's supposed to be this. Exactly the same. You start to get some from the guitars. Uh, I don't know what that technique is, but it's it's almost reminds me of um, vocal fry. Uh, 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 like it's whining, you know, kind of it's struggling. So you get that starting going, uh, uh, but also kind of reminds me of like a siren. You know, there's a little bit of an emergency feeling to it. Uh, 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 that being the minor second. So that just reestablishes that there is definitely something Phrygian going on here. The chorus lyrics. Every day is exactly the same. Every day is exactly the same. There is no love here and there is no pain. Every day is exactly the same. He could have said every day is exactly the same for all four lines and nobody would have blinked an eye. Every day is exactly the same. He's talking about it's just the same, the routine. So that would be like, cool. But he also recognizes that our brains do get bored. So he switches it up on the third line, which I think is the perfect one to change. It is exactly the same. Every day is exactly the same. We're kind of set up to expect it again, but he does something different. But then he goes back to where we started, which feels like closure. And it feels also like, well, just when you thought maybe it was different, it's not. Is it love? Sometimes it sounds like loss. Yeah, it's love. Okay, good. There is no laws here, or laws. There is no laws. And then I was like, well, that's grammatically incorrect. Would he do that? And I was like, well, he's sticking tritones and thirds in places they don't belong. So I think he would totally do something grammatically incorrect. It's almost like sonic grammatical errors, you know, but they're on, they're intentional. They're intentional. Anyone else try to make as many puns with his name as I do? message me. I also love the way that he changes up the vocal melody to suit the lyrics. For example, so, you know, at first it's like, da 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 There's a lot of syncopation there. 
case I lose myself again. And, and everything's a little bit kind of closer together. But then when he says, can't remember how this got started. That being minor third. I can tell you exactly how it will end. Suddenly things get like really straight and rigid and kind of spaced out, which emphasizes them for sure. He really finishes this off for you too. Every day is the same. He could have done the major third again. Every day is the same. But then that would have taken away, I think, from the don't know what else I can do. We got to keep that unique because it's kind of the peak, I think, of the whole song. And then it's just the drums and the drums just sort of fade out. Okay, I think that's it for this song for now. I've really focused mostly on the fragile and with teeth. But next week, I'm going to start to branch off. So expect songs from Year Zero, The Slip, Hesitation Marks. Maybe Pretty Hate Machine. The Downward Spiral is my favorite. And I've decided that I want to analyze every single song on it in order. That's going to take a little bit more doing, a little bit more continuity and more thoughtfulness. So I think that'll probably start in the spring. I already have the next one from Year Zero picked out. If you want to vote on something from Hesitation Marks, feel free to leave a comment. Hello to all the new subscribers. Glad you're here. Awesome. Well, this was so much fun. I hope to see you next week. Bye, everybody. Try to on the official interval of nine inch nails.